Hello and welcome to Adirondack Astronomy. So in this video, I'm going to take a Jupiter video that I shot on August 16th of 2020, and I'm going to run you through the steps I used to process the final image that you saw in the previous video that I posted last week at the time of posting this video last week. But anyway, so I've got my folder with my Jupiter video. I believe this was a minute and a half. Let's uh, open that up real quick and yeah. check that out. So yeah, it's it's a minute and a half long. And you can see that it's a little jumpy in there, but it's not too bad because I have tracking on my telescope. So it stayed center pretty much during the whole video. But there's all this wobbling going on. That's the, the jet stream in the atmosphere screwing around with it. So what we're going to do now is let me stop this. Close out the video window. And also let me say that I am running on Linux on this computer. Um, all these applications will work perfectly fine on Windows. I'm not sure about a Mac computer, but it works good on Windows. Um, I'm actually running these through a Windows emulator on Linux. So first program we're going to use is PIP. I can never remember what it stands for, but just remember PIP, P-I-P-P. -P. And then after running it through PIP, I'm going to run that file through Auto Stacker, And then that's going to create an image, which I'm going to sharpen in Registax. So let's open up PIP. Okay, so here we have the program open. And you can add your image files here, or like I do, you can just drag and drop it. And I believe you can do multiple videos in one shot, but I always just do one at a time because I'm me and that's the way I do things. <laughs> so anyway, now that you have your file loaded in here, you want to click on planetary because we are doing a planet. If it was a close-up of the moon, we would select uh, this solar lunar close-up. Or if it was a full disk of the moon, we would click the solar lunar full disk, so on and so forth. So anyway, what PIP does is it takes all the frames in the video and it centers the object. It puts the object in the same spot in every frame so that if there was any issues with your tracking or if you weren't tracking at all, it should center everything. And it really helps when it comes to stacking the, the uh, videos. So now that I have that in there, I go to input options. I change absolutely nothing in here, and I'm not going to go over what any of this means because I don't know. Uh, then I'm going to click processing options. I leave all this the same because I shot with a one-shot color camera, my DSLR. I'm not going to convert to monochrome. I'm not stretching anything. I'm not doing any of this. Make sure that it is object planetary there. It should be since we clicked it earlier. And the only thing I change is here, in here is I unclick enable cropping. I don't want this to crop my final image. I just want it to be the full video frame. I don't want it cropped down. I've had issues with that in the past, so I just unclick it. Now quality options, I don't mess with anything in there. Animation options, never use that, so I don't know. Output options, make sure it's an AVI file. And I'm going to have the output directory be the default, which is the folder that the original video was in. Um, subdirectory name, I leave that as pip. You could change that if you want, but I just leave it as pip. And that is it for in here. Next step is to click the do processing and start processing. So as you can see, this is going to do a total, um, a total of 2,706 frames in this minute and 30 long second, minute and 30 second long video. Uh, this takes a little bit of time, but it's not too overwhelming when your video length is short. Um, I have tried to do five minute long videos of lunar surface details and those take a long time to process. But this shouldn't take too long. I'll uh, crop out a section of this video and we'll be back when it's done. Okay, so this video is all set. 
It's done uh, processing. Um, let's see, total input frames, 2,706. It used all of the frames. It kept it as color. It went to AVI, it saved it in my folder, and processing is complete in 126.3 seconds. Okay, now that that's all said and done, we can close out PIP. And now, before I click into this folder, take a look at the size of this video. It is 468.1 megabytes. Now if we go to PIP, the video it created, the AVI is 16.8 gigabytes. That is a huge file. So usually what I do when everything is all said and done, I've got my final image, I'll go into this folder, into my Jupyter video, and I will just delete that entire folder to get rid of that and save myself some space. I'll keep the original video because I can always go back and redo everything. But this pip folder, I don't need to keep that when it's all done. Anyway, so now that we have this file. I'm not going to open it because it is extremely large and trying to play it is pretty much pointless. So I'm going to take this file and I'm going to load it into Auto Stacker. Okay, now that Auto Stacker is open, it opens these two windows. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this and drag it. Or you can always click open and search for it and find your file. I, I like the drag and drop method. So what I'm going to do here, not that it's important, but I'm going to just center Jupiter over here. And I'm going to make sure planet is selected, dynamic background is selected, gradient is selected, local is selected. And now with all that done, I am going to click analyze. So basically, Analyze is going to go through all the frames of your video and analyze the quality of each frame. And then it's going to take the best quality frames and move it to the front of the, uh, the stack. You'll see in a few minutes where there will be a graph. But it's going to move it to the, all of your best frames. So it's going to go from best to worst uh, in this graph. And then that will allow you to select which percentage of frames to stack. So once this is all done, I will be right back and we will see, I'll just be right back. Okay, now that Auto Stacker is done analyzing, here's the graph I was talking about. And you can see this green line, that is your frame quality. Um, you got these horizontal, or these vertical bars, that's 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% of your frames. And the horizontal lines is the quality, 50% quality. And for the stacking, you want to keep it above, your, above the 50% line. So you want to follow this green line. And probably the best to do would be about 15 or 20%. Get you right around in this area with the best quality frames. But I'm going to do all the way up to 25% because that's what I did in the video that I showed the final image of Jupiter in. So I'm going to do 25% of the frames. I'm going to click sharpened. It's going to create a regular image, unsharpened, and then a sharpened image to kind of give you an idea of what your image will look like once you do sharpen it yourself. RGB align. Um, honestly, I don't know if I need that clicked for my images, but I always do and they turn out fine. Save in folder, so I'll save it in, in this uh, pip folder that was created earlier. And I'm going to keep drizzle off. I've actually never played with drizzle in here. So I'm going to be stacking the first 25%, which is the best images I have, the best frames I have. Anything after that dips below 50% and then there's a major decrease in quality. That's just, you know, going to happen with atmosphere and turbulence and jet streams and all that good stuff that we have to deal with as amateur astronomers. Anyway, so now that we've got all that selected, I'm going to go and click over here in this window, the second window on the right here. Highlight the 24. Um, I have minimum brightness set to 30. We're going to place AP grids. 
Now you can see that it's overlapping, which you want. You want a bunch of overlapping, and those are all your alignment points that AutoStacker is going to use to create the final image. Now if we played around with this, we would get less or more, but I like where it's at right now. You can play around with yours, depending on how yours looks when you click the place AP grid. Um, these just make them bigger, so you get less alignment points. That's why I went with 24, because it's a small object and I want as many points as possible. I think I'm doing this right. I don't know. This is what I do, and this is how I get my images. So anyway, now that we have all that selected, we can click on Stack, and it's going to take the first 25% of my video frames and stack them. And it's going to buffer, reference image, image alignment, image stack, MAP analysis. I don't know what that means. And MAP rec recombination. I don't know what a lot of these things mean. I just play around with things until they work right. And this is what I get to work right almost every single time for all my Jupiter images, my Saturn images. The one time I did a Mars image, this is what I did. I do it for moon images sometimes, most of the time. I don't take a lot of moon images. I need to start taking more moon images. That's something I'm going to do in the future. Anyway, I'm going to let this finish doing its thing, and we will be back when it's completed. Okay, as you can see, Auto Stacker is now complete. It did everything we wanted it to do. It stacked all the frames that I wanted it to, the first 25% of them. So that is all said and done. Now that we are completed in here, we can close out Auto Stacker. And now in the same folder that our PIP video was in, we can open up the Auto Stacker folder. And now we have a regular TIFF file and a sharpened TIFF file. So the regular file, so this is the file, the untouched file. This is the file we're going to bring into Registax in a second. But you can get an idea for the quality of the stack if you do the uh, sharpen file, because this is what the sharpen file looks like. Look at that, that looks pretty good. I mean, in all honesty, if you wanted to use this as your final image, I say go for it. I don't see any reason to have to go into Registax and mess around with the wavelet layers. That's just something I like to do and I think a lot of other people like to do it. But th that's what I'm going to do. If you wanted to just crop this down and say that's it, go for it. I think that would be perfectly acceptable. Anyway, let's close that out and let's open up. Let's move this over. Let's open up Registax. Now you could use Registax to um, stack your video if you wanted to. I never have luck using Registra Registax to stack my video frames. I don't know what it is about it, but it never seems to work properly. For whatever reason, I get weird, like, I don't even know, like weird lines in the file. If I can find one that I've done in the past, I'll pop it up here somewhere and you can see it just as an example. But anyway, I'd, I've never had much luck. You're more than welcome to give it a shot. I'm not going to run through any of that in this video. So this is just my process, what I do, and you are more than welcome to follow along and do the way I do it. If you have any hints, tips, suggestions on what I do that might be wrong, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. Um, if not, then just follow along. So anyway... Here we are with Registax opened, and I am going to take the unsharpened file and drag and drop that into here. And this is going to pop up, because I did my videos at a low setting. I don't remember the settings I had it at, but apparently it wasn't extremely bright. So now I have this dim file, and you saw what the fold or what the image looked like before sharpen or before stretching intensity levels. So now I'm going to stretch the intensity levels here in Registax. So yes, and that's what that looks like. It's nice and bright, nice and bright. So the only things I'm going to do in here really is play around with the wavelet layers. You got layers one through six. 
Um, I don't normally mess around with layers one and two because they introduce a lot of noise. So I start at three and there is no rhyme or reason to the amount that I move these levers. It's just based on how it looks in the end. So if I take wavelet layer three and I crank it up about halfway, you'll see it sharpen Jupiter a bit. And then I'm going to go to four and I'm going to crank that up too. It sharpened it a bit more. I'm going to take five and I'm going to crank that up too. And six, I'm going to bring right up there with the rest. And that really seems to pull out a lot of detail, sharpens up the cloud bands and really goes from that blurry image that we weren't too sure about to this image, which is much better looking. And at this point, if you really want to, you can play around with wavelet layers one and two. There's nothing saying you can't. You can always drop them back down if you don't like the way that looks. So just for the fun of it, let's crank that up too. Crank up one and two. See, really, those that's not too bad. I mean, it might have introduced some noise. I'm just getting close to my monitor screen here. Don't mind me looking all weird. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to drop those back down because they seem to introduce more noise than I would like. Maybe just a touch. How about that? Just a touch. Just a touch of sharpening on that. Okay, we'll call that good. Now the next step you want to do is take or go up to the upper left here to do all and click on that. And that's going to apply those wavelet sharpening to the whole image. All right, now that that's all said and done, that is pretty much it. The only thing that I also do is I go to histogram and I bump up the, to the right just a little bit. Just a little bit, just like that. You can see that slight difference. It kind of dimmed around the edge of Jupiter a little bit, which I think gives it a nice look. So again, I'm gonna click do all. And that, my friends, is the final image. That is the final image. That's what I do to do my, my planetary images. I mean, you, could, you can take this, this image once, once you're done with it and bring it into Photoshop or GIMP, whatever photo editor of choice you want, and play around with settings in there if you want. But quite honestly, after running it through PIP, through Auto Stacker, and then sharpening in uh, Registax with the wavelet layers, I feel no need to bring in yet another program. So I pretty much leave it at that. Maybe I'll bring it into GIMP to crop. Uh, you can do cropping right in Registax, but for whatever reason, the couple times I've done it hasn't come out great. So I usually, if I do wanna crop it, I'll save the file. I'll bring it into GIMP and then I will crop it down from there and that's about it. So once you're here and you're happy with your final image, click save image and I just name it Jupiter August 16th, 2020. And those slashes aren't gonna work so I need the dashes, dashes not slashes. So anyway, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG you can save it as a TIFF if you'd like to bring it into Photoshop for further manipulations. But this is my final image, so I'm saving it as a JPEG. And that's it. That is it. So now that that's done, we're going to close that out. And this right here is the final image. That is the final image of Jupiter after running it through PIP, through AutoStacker, and through Registax. So hopefully this video has been helpful, and if you followed along and got any images, I would absolutely love to see your uh, planetary or lunar images if you followed my video. Link to them in the comments or message me on Twitter at Adirondack Astro. Um, yeah, those are pretty much the two spots that I'll notice and I'll see. So. So leave a comment down below with a link to your, your planetary images if you followed this tutorial. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Adirondack Astro, and you can send me send me your your uh, images there. So yeah, that's it. That's the final image. That is Jupiter after everything is all said and done. And for Saturn, 
I used the exact same steps. So there is nothing different between the Jupiter and the Saturn, except for maybe some differences in the wavelet layer adjustments. And maybe something with the AP grids in Auto Stacker. So, I mean, that's just some playing around that you're going to do depending on your video and your video quality and all that good stuff. So, anyway, that is the end. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to click the like button down below. And if you like this content and would like to see more, please be sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell notification to be notified of future videos when they're posted. And that is it for this video tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and clear skies.